Greetings, everyone. My name is David Phillips, and I direct the program on peace building and human rights at Columbia University's Institute for the Study of Human Rights. We have um, many hundreds of people that have joined this Zoom conference with a Myanmar's ambassador uh, to the UN, its permanent representative, Jo Mo Tun. We're very honored that uh, Jo Mo Tun is joining us to provide an update on the crisis in Burma and also to discuss the response of uh, member states at the UN and what the international community can do in order to help resolve the current crisis. And I think crisis is the correct word. Uh, since the military coup on February 1, at least 200 people have been killed. More than 2,000 people have been detained. Uh, Burma's economy is in collapse. Uh, the banking and international shipping industries have been seriously affected by the general strike. Uh, I received a, an email today that two thirds of the Myanmar people are living on less than $2 a day. So we're reaching a point where this crisis could worsen considerably. Uh, the US and the international community cares deeply for the Myanmar people and wants to do everything possible to de-escalate the current situation. We hope that the meeting today in Anchorage between Secretary of State Tony Blinken and China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi uh, is fruitful. But for now, we're gonna focus on uh, our guest. Uh, His Excellency Zhao Mo Tan uh, is Myanmar's permanent representative to the UN. Uh, you may have seen him on February 26th addressing the UN General Assembly. He used the three finger salute in order to show solidarity with the people of Myanmar and he called on the international community to intensify its pressure on the regime uh, so that the killing uh, can be stopped and we can enter into a new phase of reconciliation and peace building. Uh, John Motun, what you did on February 26th was an act of great heroism and courage. Everybody took note of your commitment and principle, and we greatly admire the role that you're playing. So to start the conversation, um, I'll call on you to make some remarks, uh, and then you and I will have a brief discussion before we open it up to questions and answers from the audience. So to start the discussion, um, maybe you could explain what's your diplomatic status. Does the Secretary General and UN member states recognize you as Myanmar's permanent representative to the UN? I know they tried to dismiss you you refuse. They tried to replace you with your deputy and he refused. So what's your status right now? How are you doing? Uh, thank, thank you so much, uh, 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 David. And I, good afternoon, uh, those who join here in, 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 in New York and the United States, and those who join from the others, good, uh, good morning and good Good evening. So, uh, thank you so much for this opportunity that I have uh, to uh, to share with you some of my thoughts uh, and some of the experience that I I have. But uh, please bear with me because I uh, I didn't prepare a written uh, a statement. So maybe the topic that I'm I I, I I'm going to uh, to speak it may be jump from one to another. So please bear, bear, bear with me because I didn't have much time to prepare the, uh, the sort of statement because usually, you know, because as a diplomat, we usually prepare a statement, then we deliver. So at this point, sorry, I don't have any statement. So I'm, please, please, again, please bear, bear with me if I jump from one to another, the issue. Uh, 
with regard to the questions that you 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 asked, David. Uh, yes, I'm remain permanent representative of Myanmar uh, to the United Nations. I'm 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 very determined. I I will keep my post as a permanent representative of Myanmar to the United Nations as long as I can until the end of the coup. And here, our colleagues here in the New York, they are very supportive. And because of the procedures here, uh, because I, uh, I, I was appointed uh, by the, the Aung San Suu Kyi-led government that is elected by the people of Myanmar. As you may aware, in the beginning of my statement on the 26th of February, I clearly stated that I'm representing the civilian government elected by the people of Myanmar. So here in New York, according to their procedures, the uh, in the in the in in the in the at the protocol uh, the UN protocol according to UN protocol, the head of state is uh, President Wu Min, and the foreign minister is the State Councilor Do Aung San Suu Kyi. They are remain. So so. My post as a permanent representative, as a uh, as remain, as you you mentioned, they on on 27th of February, I was dismissed by this illegitimate uh, military regime, and and they trying to appoint appoint the mind of duty uh, as a charge affair. But uh, and the following day, he submitted the letter of resignation and uh, to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So, if those who are familiar with the uh, UN protocol, you may check the the blue book. So, in the uh, my deputy is no longer in the in the blue book. So, technically speaking, uh, he he is not in the in the our diplomatic list here in 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 in, in New York. So, I'm stay the permanent representative of Myanmar uh, to the United Nations. So, so it's uh, to start the you know uh, uh, rolling the ball. Let let me say you already know about you know uh, the Myanmar the issue happened, but uh, uh, to 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 let me uh, speak a little bit about you know the what happened uh, uh, on on the first of February and how I'm, I'm uh, how I decide uh, de uh, decide to deliver the statement on 26th of February. As you know, the, the the there are a lot of rumor came out during uh, in the in in, in the January and especially in last week of of January there was a negotiation discussion and took place between the uh, the government and the delegate government and the military. But at, um, on, uh, during that time, I was told that it's it's very really difficult to get uh, the uh, the agreement. Uh, from the negotiations, uh, so but I didn't expect that you know the the coup where uh, would take place, but uh, uh, but uh, there, there 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 would be option that is what 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 I learned. So then on the first of February, but here in New York, uh, it just stay on the evening of the 30, uh, 31st of January. Uh, so so the coup took place. So we 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 I'm we we shock. Not only uh, uh, here, people outside the country, but also inside the country, we all got shocked with the uh, military coup. And uh, so, you know, right after the military coup, you all see that you know millions, millions of people came out on the streets and ex expressed their disappointment with the military coup, uh, ex expressed their uh, their demands uh, for release of the uh, our leaders, the Aung San Suu Kyi. The president Wu Wenmin and the other political leaders and the you know civil 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 activists. You at the beginning, as you see that all the protests uh, took place in Myanmar, is very very peaceful. But but later, uh, the 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 crackdown made by the, uh, the 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 military is really brutal. Even it's reached to the crimes against humanity, so it is not acceptable uh, to all of us. So that is why you know people came out and keep keep 
uh, keep protesting against the uh, military coup. Why I'm I'm I deliver the statement? Uh, because you know it's uh, since the first of February, uh, uh, I, I already decided you know I can't accept any kind of military coup in Myanmar because we don't want to go back to the system that that we used to be in before. So definitely I have to fight back the uh, the, the the military regime. So luckily I can stand with our people of Myanmar. Uh, uh, so that, that is what I see. It's, it's very lucky for me. And and on the second of February, uh, I had I had the chance to chat with the uh, the uh, permanent representative of United Kingdom, the then the president of the UN Security Council, because on that day uh, they uh, uh, there was a closed door meeting uh, uh, on, on Myanmar. Uh, uh, and then the briefing by the special envoy, Ms. Uh, Christine Buckner. Uh, so at the time, you know, I, I, I mentioned to her about, you know, my feeling and my thoughts. Then luckily on the 4th of Fe uh, uh, February, uh, uh, the press statement issued by the Security Council, it is sort of encouragement for all of us, but it stay, you know, it's not reach uh, our expectation because we really want to have the some sort of languages that it condemned the military coup and then demand the uh, the release of the the, the, the leaders. But it's a bit, it's, it's they say a language for uh, for calling for the release of the uh, the leaders. But it's a bit, the things that we want to see is the you know the military coup that is that all the you know it started it's make things uh, worse in in the country. So so it's a, it's the international community need to condemn the military coup. You know, as strong as possible. That is the point that we always raise. Uh, so since then, I already decided. You know, I I have to do it something. Uh, so on 12 of Jan uh, 12 of February, uh, there uh, there was a special session on Myanmar at the Human Rights Council in Geneva. Uh, then uh, the, uh, the, uh, there there was a discussion between the you know special reporter and the our our representative there. I mean, uh, uh, there and the, you know the discussion take place and the resolution was adopted by the consensus. Consensus when the resolution was adopted by the consensus, I feel so encouraged because it's so so that member member states are are are, 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 are united. But it's uh, it's there are some member states it's express their disassociation uh, uh, with the uh, disassociate with the. Uh, 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 the resolution, but anyway, it's uh, it showed that you know no no country were not against the people that who uh, who are asking or longing for the democracy and ending the military coup in Myanmar. Uh, so because in the in the our the UN system, when it, uh, something happened in Geneva, definitely it's welcome to New York. So then it happened. It's come to New York because uh, according to the uh, UNGA resolution on Myanmar. There is a one paragraph is saying that uh, the special uh, special envoy has to brief the uh, the General Assembly uh, uh, in in, in uh, twice a year, so in once in six six months. So actually, it's supposed to brief in May or June, but it's a bit it's happened uh, earlier. So that's good. That so uh, so it's a bit good opportunity for me to deliver the statement. So I did it. So uh, so this. Uh, I also expected that, you know, uh, after the delivering statement, it, the, the, uh, the action will be come from the uh, NITIRO, that they did it, and I was dismissed. But uh, I, it, since then, I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I make myself clear that I'm representing the, you know, the, uh, the civilian government elected by the people. I will remain the permanent representative of Myanmar to the UN as long as I can and until the end of the military coup. Uh, so, but thing not stop there. It's, it's, it's continue. But look at the, you know, the, the people of Myanmar, especially our young generation, innocent civilian, are suffering from the brutal act committed by the uh, the military regime even we 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 could use the word fascist uh, military regime uh, the, because on 16 of uh, march uh, two days ago i wrote a letter to the secretary general 
and even I use the word what fascist uh, military uh, ma 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 military uh, regime. Uh, so you know the people, as, as you you are aware that you know the on the social media is clearly state that you know uh, uh, it's 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 people a lot of people uh, were killed and murdered, and it's 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 in a inhumane way. So that it's not acceptable to all of us. So even in my statement, I also mentioned that people in Myanmar feel helpless. So we need help from the international community. We need support from the international community. What kind of support? Of course, at this time, we need the protection from the international community. There may be a lot of questions when we use the word protection. Of course, for me, any any kind of protection, uh, any kind of you know measures from the international community to protect the our innocent civilian, to protect the peaceful protesters, are are really needed at this time. At, as quick as the action be 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 taken as quick as possible. That is what we we really looking forward to having from the international uh, co co community, but so stay you know uh, the the, uh, the the same member state already imposed the targeted sanctions uh, against the uh, the leaders of the military regime. The targeted sanctions we it somehow is impact on the military regime. That is it's a no doubt that that, that there is an impact, but at the same time. We always, you know, uh, I always stress that whatever uh, targeted session that we have, that we need to look into the spillover, <coughs> excuse me, uh, spillover impact on the on the people. That sp spillover impact should be minimal, sh sh as less as possible. Be that is because of the, our experience that we have. The sometimes the spread over impact it's much, much, much more than the you know the people that they targeted uh, to. So so that is why I really like to stress here as well to uh, to to look at the you know spread over uh, effect you know as, as should be as minimal as possible. And you know I agree with the uh, the uh, special reporter who spoke uh, uh, in the Human Rights Council last week. He, talk, he, he, he stressed about the targeted, coordinated TEFA sanction from the international community. Because we all know that the sanction from the UN is very difficult at this time, but we still need the sanction, that targeted sanction that can be imposed by the you know, member state. If we can get the you know, larger member state, like a group of like-minded countries, have the you know coordinated targeted sanction on the you know military regime. Definitely, it will help us a lot uh, for uh, for putting pressure on the uh, military regime. But at the same time, we also need to look at the you know the financial flow that go to uh, the military regime. Not only its institution, but also its companies. It's the you know, companies of the, uh, the, the 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 individuals of the military regime. As well as their family members, that also the family, uh, the financial flow is also one of the urgent matter that we need to look into and get the flow as quick as possible. That sort of you know sanction that we really looking forward to uh, to receiving from the international co uh, community. Why we are waiting for the the uh, the sanction from the uh, the uh, uh, the United Nations. So and then also you know it's come back to the uh, the the uh, the words uh, the protection you know it's, uh, that protection you know it can be then uh, not only coming the you know the uh, the military intervention but also you know other uh, action can also uh, uh, protect the people in Myanmar so doing by by doing putting the pressure on the military. So also, you know, whoever had the influence on the military, please approach them and, and, and put pressure on military to stop killing people, to let the, you know, the peaceful pro pro protester to express their desire on the street. So it's, 
it's I what I like to stress that please let the people enjoy the freedom of assembly, freedom of ex expression on the street all the time. That is I like to stress. So that's kind of you know the freedom of assembly and freedom of expression can enjoy by the all people. The you know the 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 uh, the uh, the violent you know uh, act from the uh, the military can be can be stopped. That is what we we really looking forward to uh, to to having the uh, uh, the support from the international co community. And so let me stop here. I think I think I I would have only ten minutes, but I think I spoke more than ten minutes. Sorry about the the timing. As I uh, at the at, 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 at the beginning, I talk uh, I mentioned that you know I don't have the uh, the the written statement, so that you know I going back and forth so sorry about that and i really looking forward to having interact uh, uh interactive dialogue with our uh our brothers sisters i saw it sam uh, our Myanmar colleagues are here uh on, on the screen so thank you so much uh not only our colleagues from the outside uh, uh those in the foreign country but also our fellow Myanmar who joined this you know uh this uh uh interactive you know discussion thank you so much so your your support your continuous support is really important for all, all of us in Myanmar especially when we are working with three pillars uh, one is you know the the young people who risking their own lives on the street the protesters and then another pillar is you know civil disobedient movement the the civil servants are really uh joining this movement for the uh, for for the country that at the same time the work of the crph so these three pillars that we are working together i believe that this we this together we can we can win so definitely we the military coup must end the the our dem democracy must prevail in Myanmar. Our fight must and will win. That is what I believe. Thank, thank you. Thank you, David. Yeah. Thank you, John Moton. We also believe uh, in those goals. So let's talk a little bit about the international reaction and how we move from the current violent conflict to a period of de-escalization and normalization. What is China's role in all this? I know that there are extensive commercial contacts uh, between China's generals and their counterparts in Burma. When I was in Michina, I saw a very strong Chinese presence exploiting the teak forests and also jade. Uh, with secondary sanctions on Chinese companies that are uh, buying products from Burma's generals be effective as a way of draining the swamp of financial support for the junta? Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you, David. So, so I, I, I will respond question by question or you will collect the question. So I will respond your question first, then, then and then other questions that raised, then we can. Let's have a dialogue. Um, and then I've been receiving questions from the audience. At the okay. end of our dialogue, I'll ask those questions on behalf okay. of our of our other guests. Yeah, sound great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, yeah, of course. You know, when I mentioned Tucker sanctions, you know, whatever the financial flows is go into the military regime. You know, the, its institution, its people, its individual. Uh, and and when I'm talking about individual military individual and then their family members, all kinds of financial flows we need to cut it off. So that that is you know uh, uh, very wide, but when you, you put it in together, it is very small. So that is uh, I think I believe that uh, you know international community, especially country like uh, like United States can influence those companies uh, working with the 
uh, 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 military regime be, to be behave, especially at this time, because the way the brutality that they committed, no one, no one uh, uh, accept it. So that that's the way you know the second whether it's you say it's secondary or whatever. The the point that I like to stress is any kind of financial flow, any kind of business link should be kept, whether it is indirectly or directly. Thank you, thank you, thank you, David. So on Tuesday, Secretary Blinken met with his counterpart, Foreign Minister Yoshimitsu Motegi in Tokyo, and uh, he expressed, quote, serious concerns over China's violation of human rights. Since Japan, is a large investor and commercial partner in Burma. What role can Japan play to de-escalate the conflict? Uh, th th thank you so much. Uh, uh, last yesterday, also I had the you know the interview with uh, uh, one 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 of the Japanese uh, 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 news agency. So uh, what I see is that you know because with Japan, Myanmar have you know long history and good relationship. And then also in terms of economy, uh, they have huge investment in Myanmar. Then we can look at from the economic point, they have a lot, a lot, they can play a crucial role to de-escalate uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the violence in, in Myanmar. How? To de-escalate. Uh, you know, at this point, you know, what we need is that, you know, whatever the pressure that please please put on the military regime first do do not recognize the military regime at, at by any means that is what we see is the very important do not engage with the military regime at any level i mean what i mean that any level mean the you know the political level because for reality some interaction where going uh, may go on that interaction it's only for the benefit of the people not to the benefit of this uh, uh, group so that that is very clear so the 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 japan the uh, the people of japan and the government of japan they have the leverage to put pressure on uh, on the military then Taking this opportunity because of the question that re, uh, you, you raised, I thank and the, uh, the people and the, uh, the government of Japan for their contribution uh, so far. But at the same time, we need to, to receive further, stronger action from, the, from Japan to put more pressure on, 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 uh, on, on the military regime. But sometimes, I what I like to stress that when you look at only one point of view, then it's very difficult. When is you look at only economic point of view, maybe the the others may think you know positively. But when it the issue come to Myanmar, especially at this time, you need to look at the issue from the multiple point of view, especially political point of view. That is that is what I like to stress. Thank you. Thank you. Let's discuss the attitude of the Association of Southeast Asian nations, ASEAN. Uh, there's, a, there's an unspoken rule in ASEAN that it doesn't criticize any of its members for their internal affairs. Has ASEAN as a body reacted to the coup? Have any individual countries in ASEAN been leaning forward? Which countries are most sympathetic to the Myanmar people? And I'm specifically interested in Indonesia's role. So if you could touch on that in your response. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. We are family members. So we, we listen to each other, but at the same time, we respect the principle of ASEAN, that is non-interference of the you know, domestic affairs or other, but also all the decision made by consensus. So we respect it because it's, uh, uh, we are the members of the ASEAN. So it's the ASEAN has its own charter. It's, uh, it's, we, we, we need to respect it. But at the same time, the situation that we are facing is, is, is quite, a, I should say, quite extraordinary. 
So we need to look at I mean, the ASEAN need also need to look at the you know the issue in a innovative way, creative way, and 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 but at the same time you know uh, uh, because whatever the support that they already uh, extended to people of Myanmar, I thank them, all our family members. You know, I always stress that, you know, because we believe in ASEAN, of course, we are the ASEAN members. But, but you know, when you are talking about sympathy towards the people of Myanmar, definitely I'm very sure that all of our, our family members in ASEAN, they, they have high sympathetic uh, to, to the people of Myanmar. Maybe the degree may differ from one to another, but in general, the, the sympathy towards the Myanmar, no doubt that they 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 they, they, they have it. No, so uh, you look at the statement come out from the AI, uh, AIMM ASEAN Foreign Minister uh, uh, meet, meeting uh, 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 early this week, uh, this month. You know, as as you know. Uh, we, we, it's go by consensus. So some elements, some member state like to put in, but it's a because of the uh, uh, principle of consensus. Some uh, it's not not uh, appear on the uh, on the statement. Of course, it's a, it's a understandable, but at the same time, uh, we need to to respect the rule of or of ASEAN. How? Uh, so maybe in that sense also there are some. Indi individual country have very strong and uh, the the uh, the speaking out uh, uh, louder uh, with regard to the uh, the issue in, in 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 Myanmar. Look at the you know our uh, our uh, our colleagues, our, our family members, uh, the Indonesia, uh, uh, the foreign minister Ibu Ratno, she played a role, and so she have you know the sh uh, sh uh, 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 shuttle diplomacy. A meeting with the you know the uh, the, uh, the 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 hard counterparts from the uh, from the ASEAN and then also you know the uh, it is land that it's a, a phone call with the you know other uh, foreign ministers. I appreciate you know the efforts that made by the EU you know in in this regard. Uh, uh, but at the same time, you know the uh, as a family members, uh, we we need to support each other. But especially in this case. The, the 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 people of Myanmar we are suffering uh, from the uh, Butre Act committed by the military. So definitely ASEAN like to stress about the you know dialogue. Definitely we agree. You know it's a as, as a diplomat I I believe in engagement. Uh, so it's a we, we need to have the dialogue. Of course whenever we solve we want to solve the problem, but. When we have, we want to have the dialogue. Dialogue should be a meaningful dialogue, not a one-sided dialogue. So to have to have a meaningful dialogue, it is very very much imperative that the that our leaders, the Aung San Suu Kyi, President U Win Yin, and other uh, leaders, and the all the unlawful detainees should be released before taking any dialogue, uh, before any dialogue taking place. That is, you know, that, that that's the way that we can get the uh, meaningful dialogue between the, you know, uh, uh, among the re re relevant stakeholders. So, so that is the message, you know, that, you know, I also like to convey here to, you know, our, our family members, ASEAN. So, so it, if they can play the role to have the meaningful dialogue, we were we were appreciate you know whoever put their efforts in that direction. Thank you. India is another big player in the region, uh, and India has a long border with Myanmar, particularly on Chin State. Uh, there's been an escalation of violence in Chin State, and there's a real risk that there could be a migration of people from Chin State into India which would destabilize uh, India as well as Myanmar. Have you had contact with the permanent representative from India? And how would you assess his attitudes towards the people? Uh, th thank you so much. Yeah, I haven't had the, you know, had the chance to talk with uh, 
with uh, 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 my counterpart uh, 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 in, in India permanent representative. Uh, as you know here, you know, we look at, we more focus on the multilateral approach, not the, you know, bilateral approach. Of, of course, sometimes we talk here, you know, bi uh, bi uh, bilateral here, but at this time, since the, uh, the India is also a member of the Security Council, uh, he might be very busy with, you know, uh, issue in the, in, the, in, in, in the Security Council. So to be very frank, I haven't had, uh, had, had a chance to talk with uh, my, uh, my counterpart, uh, Indian permanent representative here. Of course, you know, the, uh, because of the, the things happened in you know, Myanmar, and then also, you know, because of the uh, uh, CDM joined by the same police forces uh, in, in, in Chin states, those uh, uh, people already moved into India. So that's the way, you know, uh, uh, migration is already, I should say, migration is already taken place. Uh, so, of course, in the future, definitely there, there'll be, there, there, there migration might take place. We don't want to have any migration to the other country. So the important thing is we need to stop military regime. We need to end the military coup. And then we need to bring back the dipl uh, diplomacy, uh, sorry, uh, democracy to the people of Myanmar. That's the way we can, you know, deter or we can prevent the, the migration from uh, to the other countries. So we've seen reports that the Arakan army is siding with the junta. Can you confirm that? The Arakan army in Iraq? Uh, I, it's, it's difficult, you know, it's, I, I, I don't know exact, exactly, but because the information that I have is on, it's, I mean, everybody, everybody see it, uh, uh, because uh, uh, I don't know exactly whether AA is siding with the military or not. But you know, as you know, it's a AA is fighting with the military. You know, uh, until uh, you know, uh, until January this year. So I don't know, but at this time there is no conflict. That is good news for all of us because we don't want to have any conflict in in any place in in Myanmar. Because if you have a conflict, there'll be a displacement and there'll be a, a, a killing of people. So to avoid this kind of situation, we wish there be no conflict in, in, in Myanmar. It's a good that there is a no fight in, in Yakai. That is a good for Aurora, especially those uh, people living uh, living in Yakai, uh, Yakai State. Sorry, I don't have the black and white answer uh, uh, to your question. Well, Rakhine State is a very remote area. It's hard to get the information. Second for, second for states in in, in, in Myanmar after Chin State. Yeah. So we have some uh, friends in Rakhine State. If we learn anything, we'll let you know. Uh, Thank you. Let's talk about the other armed ethnic groups. Um, are they sympathetic? These ethnic groups have fought the Tatmadaw over many, many years. And um, recently, uh, we've seen a report in Kachin State that uh, the Kachin Independence Army was helping to protect and escort some of the people who were caught in the conflict. So what about the armed ethnic groups? Do they have a uniform approach or does it depend on their participation in the national ceasefire agreement? Uh, th th thank you, thank you uh, for the question. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's clear, you know, because uh, th those M, uh, ethnic M organizations, ethnic M groups, they, 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 they were victims of the military regime for so long time. So when it's happened, definitely they have sympathy towards the, you know, people, uh, people of Myanmar. So there is no doubt that. Uh, uh, as far as I, 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 I know, uh, the, we are working uh, together with M, uh, ethnic M organization to fight the, our common enemy, the military, uh, 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 to end their neutrality. So that's the way I fully uh, understand that. That's the way uh, uh, the, the people and the ethnic organization are working together. 
but maybe some IM organization already you know express their their position uh, publicly but Sam may, uh, may, may only express, you know, or, or just between the, you know, relevant stakeholders. So what I can say is that, you know, so, so there is already cooperation and coordination among the, you know, the people and the uh, and, and organizations. Tell us about the um, approach of the Buddhist monks. We, we've had an interreligious dialogue with Christians, Muslims, and Buddhists. Sitagu Sayadaw was involved. Uh, in 2007, Buddhist monks played a pivotal role in initiating the Saffron Revolution. What's been their response to the junta on February 1? Uh, so you can, when you're talking about monks, so I, I, I like to point it out the monks in Mandalay, you know, one of the monks were, uh, was killed. Then following days, so, so many monks came out on the streets and uh, expressed their disappointment and uh, uh, with the military regime and they protest uh, against the uh, military regime. That's the way the monks are participating in this uh, our fight against the uh, against the uh, the military coup and military regime. Uh, so of course uh, you may uh, those who 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 familiar with the uh, the issue of Myanmar, it, among monks among themselves so they are a uh, different group. So some pro military, some really you know uh, 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 following. Uh, I mean the uh, the pro. Or to the people and uh, and pro democracy, so that sort of uh, are things that we have. But uh, 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 to make my answer short, is that the uh, the monks are participating in 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 this uh, as this demonstration, this protest against the military regime. So Columbia University prepared a curriculum on social harmony drawing on the Buddha's Theravada teachings and working with the monks, we shared that at the different um, monasteries. We'll send you a copy of the curriculum, which I think you may find useful. Thank, thank you, thank you so much. It's, it's very, uh, uh, very, very, definitely it's very, very helpful for me. You know, harmony, we always, if, if you don't mind, let me, uh, uh, express my thought. Harmony is very important for for us because you know we 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 have so so many uh, different uh, ethnic groups so that you know we can uh, uh, we, we, we 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 can have you know the harmonious society in Myanmar. That is very important. We need to to educate by ourselves. So that you know, this kind of curriculum will be very helpful for 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 us. So I hope that in the near in the future, we this kind of curriculum be be used in the uh, our 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 school. You know, because uh, the, to have harmony among the you know different society, different community, need to start from the beginning. I mean, the uh, from primary level. You know. That sort of uh, uh, education that we need for the you know people of Myanmar. Jamatan, as we've been speaking, I've received lots of questions from our guests, so I'm incorporating those questions into our discussion. Okay. Many Thank of the you. questions have to do with accountability. Uh, what can be done uh, to activate the International Criminal Court or some other mechanism? So that the perpetrators of crimes against humanity can be exposed and can be held accountable. Yeah, it's uh, now uh, I learned that the CRPH uh, is working on it, uh, uh, whether uh, uh, it can bring to the ICC, because uh, the, the point that we, we uh, uh, the CRPH is looking at is 12, uh, Article 12.3. So that that is the you know the 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 venue or the window that we can uh, we can bring in 
and those uh, perpetrators, uh, 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 those who committed the crimes against humanity in, in, in Myanmar. So they, they need to be accountable because it's the, the way that they, uh, 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 they, they acted against the, uh, the innocent civilian, innocent uh, peaceful protester is beyond, beyond uh, 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 our imagination, you know. Uh, that uh, we, we they, they need to be accountable. You no, know, they they have to be uh, uh, they have to be taken action, uh, w w whatever way that uh, we can, domestically or internationally. That we need to we we need to take uh, look into it. And we so in this case also, you know, it's a be if help from the international community be be also helpful for the uh, people of Myanmar, so that you know the the, the vicious cycle can be avoided in the future. So as you know, uh, involvement by the ICC requires a referral from the UN Security Council, where both China and Russia are permanent members. So we should pursue the ICC's involvement, but also explore other accountability mechanisms. And we have a good legal team at Columbia that's worked on transitional justice. So we can share some information with you on this subject as well. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Uh, because uh, I think CRPH has already have the law, uh, law uh, the law, uh, lawyer team, and they are looking at all uh, all venue to bring the uh, perpetrator accountable. Uh, so the the ICC is one uh, one of one of them because you know because we are not the state party to the ICC, but uh, we need to look at the uh, the way or uh, explore the you know ways and means to bring uh, uh, the case to the ICC uh, before uh, being a state party to 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 their own statute. So that you know uh, uh, definitely you know you are you your 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 expertise your your in 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 this area will be very helpful for the you know our our, our lawyer team. So in that case you know if if is you wish me to connect with your team and the our CRPH uh, uh, lawyer team, then I think that will be very helpful. You know, when we consider with one uh, one head, it's not really you know uh, we can go very limited uh, steps. But if we go with so many heads, then we can have the solution uh, 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 quickly and effectively. That is what I believe. So your help is very, very much important for us. So we'd welcome an introduction to the C, uh, to your legal team. We also know that uh, when there's a violent conflict, which is fast moving, it's uh, difficult to gather data about the victims. So do you have a database of the several hundred people who have been killed? Do you know the names of those who were detained? Uh, yes, I think the the, the best uh, uh, database that we can refer to at this point is AAPP. Uh, I, I think they have the up to date uh, up to date database uh, uh, on the you know those who those who die and those who killed uh, the name, age, and the venue, uh, the location. And also those who arrested, uh, and 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 I think this, that information provide, provided by AAPP, be I think is is very useful. So you can you can check that they they they, they put in the, their website. So you can check the website of AAPP. I think it's it's very useful. AAPP, yeah, double A double P, yeah. So we have some questions that I'll read to you. Uh, one anonymous question. Uh, has the military contacted you before the coup? And have you been in touch with members of the junta since February 1? No. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, no. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 nobody uh, have contacted me. Because, you know, uh, I, 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 I work closely with the NLD uh, go led government. Uh, so, no, I, I, I don't. I, 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 nobody contacted me uh, before first of February from the military side. We have a question from Bernard Min 
about um, a negotiated solution that would be a win-win to resolve the current situation. Um, he wants to know who is best placed to represent the Myanmar people in such a negotiation. Uh, it, it is really tough question. You know, when we're talking about win-win, do you want the military to get some win? <laughs> no, right? <laughs> we want the people to win. Yes, yes. So that is very clear, you know. Uh, 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 so because as I mentioned, you know, earlier, when we 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 like to have the dialogue, the dialogue should be meaningful one. How we can get the dialogue? So we definitely we cannot ignore the rule of rule of China. This might very personal, you know. That's the, the thinking a lot. Uh, we cannot ignore the rule of China because they are they are our, uh, our 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 neighbor. They have so many uh, investment in Myanmar, and uh, historically we have, I should say, uh, uh, excellent relationship between the two countries. Uh, so we cannot ignore it. So at the same time, you know, to look at from the reality point of view. If the only China play a role, definitely people of Myanmar may not be comfortable with. So we need to find someone else who should be. So maybe United States, because uh, uh, at this point, I think compare uh, among the, uh, the 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 countries who are supporting Myanmar, uh, United States is very vocal and also you know uh, they supporting us uh, at, at so much. Uh, so that you know, if if the the United States can play the role together with China, then we can have some sort of you know uh, 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 solution that be you know I mean sustainable solution for for the for for the country. But the, 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 this is my think uh, uh, just thinking aloud. Definitely, uh, you. All of your, uh, all, 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 all my colleagues here who participating in this uh, 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 discussion, you know more than me. So please, whatever you know, thought that can bring in the peace and the prosperity to to Myanmar is most most welcome. So, uh, during the meeting in Anchorage today, there are going to be many areas of disagreement between the Secretary of State and China's Foreign Minister, you've made an important point that China and the U.S. can work together to facilitate a de-escalation, de-escalization, and also to move Myanmar towards democracy and restore the election results. So we'll be sure, we'll be sure to share, share that recommendation with U.S. officials. Thank, thank you, thank you so much. Because at this at this time, the most important thing for the people of Myanmar is saving life. Any any kind of measure, any kind of action that save life, I mean, protect people is much much imperative for for all of, all of us. We don't want to lose any more life of our. Uh, our fellow Myanmar, especially our young generation, we don't want to lose any more life of of people in Myanmar. So, so your recommendation to the United States government will be very much helpful. And also, please, please, and uh, 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 recommend and the and the uh, the government to take stronger and tougher uh, uh, action. Uh, and find the United States to the military regime. So before we adjourn, uh, I've got one last question uh, from a Myanmar uh, resident in New York. Wants to know what the diaspora can do to help the Myanmar people during this time of crisis. Oh. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I think and the Myanmar community here, you know, uh, or already con contributed a lot, you know, I should say, you know, because uh, that, that is, you know, it's, I, I, 
I speak uh, uh, based on my own experience. You no, know, uh, when I delivered the statement on 26, and uh, after I came out from the uh, uh, UN building, so there were a group of Myanmar community uh, people, and they uh, they had the demonstration. I, I had the chance to join them and speak briefly with them. So then the encouragement given by the our Myanmar community here is already a lot to me. And then the following day on Monday, uh, I mean following day mean on 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 first of March. When we uh, and when I came to the uh, the office, uh, and the a lot a lot of people uh, 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 were in front of the uh, the uh, the mission, and they cheers me. I feel so uh, so encouraged. I feel so happy that to see the eagerness of the the, the Myanmar community here in New York uh, uh, for the uh, uh, for for their support. So that is my. Uh, my personal uh, experience, and then and the one point, you know, uh, that uh, we had some sort of, you know, a rumor that you know people from Washington D.C. and then the military attaché and the ambassador, uh, they uh, they they will come uh, come to New York to you know take over the the mission. That sort of thing that happened. So within a few uh, uh, within an hour, so many people gather in front of the. Uh, of the mission, so this kind of support is really, uh, really helpful for for me. And then, what kind of support we really need? So please, please continue what you are doing, what you are supporting uh, to the people of Myanmar uh, here here in New York. And then also, you know, those diaspora, Myanmar diaspora all over the world. They are the role that every each and everyone can play by moral support, and then the, the 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 whoever you know can provide the financial support, whoever can provide the you know uh, the physical support, you know because here's for example the the uh, the uh, the office the international relations office of CRPH is working in the Maryland so. Already, the our Myanmar community is helping uh, us a lot, helping the CRPH a lot. So please continue helping the CRPH. Please, uh, whatever way that you know, because technically, you know, the 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 uh, we need the help from the our community here. Also, in terms of research, also we need the help from the uh, the uh, the community here. So 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 each and everyone can uh, have the role to play. Uh, in 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 in, in, uh, in in our efforts for bringing uh, in the de uh, 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 democracy uh, back to the uh, back to the people in Myanmar. So not only people inside the country, but also people outside the country. Even uh, the 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 ex Myanmar. Even when we are talking about ex Myanmar, we are stay the Myanmar. We are stay the uh, the the family members. So you all have the you know role to play. Please, please. That is also I made uh, it. Also I reflected in my statement on 26 of February. We all have have the role to play. Thank thank you so much. So we wanted to invite you, so we could learn from you about the situation, to think together about how to resolve the crisis. We also want to send a message that you're not alone that we stand in solidarity with you and with Myanmar people who are aspiring for democracy and to implement the results freely and fair, fairly from the elections in November. Uh, so that was what motivated us to reach out to you. We also recognize that uh, indifference is also in itself a human rights abuse, and that silence is complicity. So we are not indifferent to the plight of the Myanmar people. We are not silent in the face of atrocities committed by the junta. We stand with the people of Myanmar and you as its permanent representative to the UN 
and we pledge our solidarity and support in the hopes of moving through this tragic period and getting to a stage where we can begin the task of peace building. So I think with that, John Moton, thank you. Thank we can you. adjourn. If, if, Is there a yeah. final word that you would like to yeah. say? Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Uh, it's really encouraging, you know, your 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 remarks, and uh, it's it's. Uh, uh, I really thank the, uh, you, David, and the Columbia University, for having me here, and then giving the opportunity uh, to to convey the voices of 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 Myanmar, and then uh, convey the my my thoughts uh, to the uh, to the, our colleagues here. So. I really appreciate for for organizing this uh, event, and also I'd like to thank each and everyone who participated in this uh, uh, in this discussion. I by that you know I like to to end by saying you know I like to repeat the military coup must fail, democracy must prevail. Our five must and we we win year of all thank you thank you well we we echo your words and we express our respect and appreciation to you and we'll make this interview widely available meanwhile i'd like to thank you for joining us i'd like to thank the audience for logging on and participating and we look forward to restoring freedom and democracy in Myanmar and visiting friends uh, in the country so that we can celebrate the people's victory over the military dictatorship. So with that, we are adjourned. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,